If you're still using Excel for data-driven testing, you need to stop and watch this video. And what you're seeing here is the sandbox page at AutomateNow.io. Here we have different things that we can automate. Today, we're going to be taking a look at this right here that says form fields. Let's click on this. And this is a very basic web form. Some of the things that we can do here, for example, is to fill out this field right here. We can select some check boxes, maybe a radio button. There's also a drop down over here that we can select different items from. I'm going to select one of these here. I can enter an email here if I want or some other text over here and then click submit. So I'm going to click submit. When the form gets submitted, I get a brief summary that looks like this. Now we want to write a test that is going to automate this process of submitting this form. Let's go to the code. I didn't want to bore you when writing this test. That's why I went ahead and created it beforehand. So let's have a look at what this test is doing right here. So this is called test submit form. We have a before test here that is going to be in charge of navigating to the sandbox page at automate now. Then we're going to select form fields to go to the form fields page. Once we're on that page, these are the things that we're going to do. We're going to provide input for each of the fields. So for example, here we're setting set input field text. We're selecting a checkbox. We're selecting a radio button and so on and so on until we click submit. After the form gets submitted, we perform an assertion to make sure that we submitted the form successfully. You may have noticed that I'm not hard coding any of the values here. Instead, I want to use a data provider to read this data from. So you'll notice that this method right here is saying that it has a data provider called data provider one, and it's located in this class, data util. Let me go to that class now by control clicking on this. This is the class right here. And here's my data provider, data provider one. There's nothing in this method right now. That's what we're going to work on next. And this video is about using YAML to make our test data driven. So now is a great time to show you the YAML file that we're going to be using. That is this file over here called data one. So I'm going to double click on this. This is a simple YAML file that is a data representation of the web form that I'm trying to automate. Recall that the web form has different fields. And these are the different fields. We have an input field, checkbox, radio button, and other things here. So what this file is saying here, for input field, we want to use the word hello. For checkbox, we want to select the first checkbox. For radio button, we want to select white, and so on and so forth. In previous videos, I've shown you how to use JSON data to make our test data driven. In those videos, we used the JSON simple along with the JSON libraries to read our data. However, in this video, we won't be able to use any of those libraries because this isn't JSON data. We're working with YAML. One of the libraries that we can use in Java to work with YAML is called Snake YAML. So we will need to add the dependency for that library in this project. Let's take a look at that. So you're going to need to go to mvnrepository.com. Once we're on here, we're going to search Snake YAML and then press Enter. Then we can select this one right here from org.yaml. When I'm recording this video, the latest version is 1.30. So I'm gonna click on that. And then I need to grab this information right here. All you need to do is to click on this area to copy the information. Now let's go back to our project. Now we need to go to the palm.xml file. That's this one over here. So let's double click on that. And now I'm going to scroll down to the dependencies section. This area right here, dependencies. I'm gonna scroll down and add the dependency at the end over here. Then we need to click this button over here to load the dependency. Now we're ready to start writing our data provider. So let's go over here to the data util class so that we can start writing that data provider. So over here, I'm going to say return read YAML. Then I'm going to provide the path where my YAML file is located. I'm going to explain why in a minute. So for now, I'm just going to put double quotes here and grab the path for this file right here, data one. So let's right click this. Let's click on copy path reference. And then I'm going to select path from content root. And I'm going to paste that information here. So let's go ahead and write this method over here. I'm going to click create method. It will return a two dimensional array. And we're going to set a string. We're going to call this file name. Let me give you the first piece of code that we're going to need here. First, we need to create an input stream to read the YAML data. I have some errors here, so let me go ahead and do some imports here. All right, we're all set. Notice that I have a try cache block in case there are any issues with the file. Now we're ready to start using the snake YAML library. 
the first thing that we need to do is to create an instance of YAML. So here I'm going to say YAML. This comes from the snake YAML. So I'm going to double click that. I'm just going to call it YAML is equal to new YAML. Now we need to read the YAML file. So the way we do that is we say YAML dot load. And then we need to pass in the input stream that we created over here. So let's double click this and paste it over here. Now this method right here is going to return a map object. So we need a place to store it. Let's go ahead and create that. So here I'm going to say map. Then I'm going to say string comma object. I'm simply going to call this data is equal to whatever gets returned from this call over here. Now, why am I using string comma object? Let me bring up this file over here. In this YAML file, anything that is to the left of this colon right here is going to be treated as a string. That's why I'm using a string right here. And then on the right side, I can find any type of data. For example, I can find a string, a Boolean, an integer, and other things. For example, this right here is a string, while this right here is an integer. And that's why we're using object over here, because it can be any type of object. Let's continue. So now we have the data stored in this map right here. However, this method right here needs to return a two-dimensional array. So now we need to create that array to store this map data in. So I'm going to say object, and then array. I'm going to call this test data is equal to new object. I'm only going to have a one row and one column for this object right here. And that is because I'm only going to be storing this map data in this array right here. Now I'm going to add the map data into this array. So here we're going to say test data at zero, zero, that is row zero, column zero, is equal to data, this map data right here. And now all we need to do is say return test data. That takes care of reading the data from the YAML file. Now we should be able to use that data in our test. One thing that I forgot to mention is this right here. When we say return read YAML and then we pass in the location of where the YAML file is, that information is used by this parameter over here. And notice that we're passing this file name to this input stream right here. So we're telling this input stream where the file is. So as you can see, with just a few lines of code, we're able to parse that YAML data and send it to our test. Let's go have a look at our test. In our test, we've said that the data provider is data provider one. And we have this hash map parameter right here to receive the data from the data provider. Then we're able to access the data that we want by simply saying hash map that get and whatever value we want to get. In this case, we were saying hash map that get input field. What this is going to return is whatever is stored to the right side of this colon when we say input field is going to return this value right here, hello. In the same way, when we say hash map that get checkbox, it is going to return the number one. So why do you say we run this test to see what happens? Here we have the test running. It's going to the form fields page and trying to fill out the data right now. But our test failed. Let's see why. I'm going to click on this right here, the test name. And we have a class cast exception. Namely, it's saying that integer cannot be cast to a string. Why is that? This exception is getting thrown from here, line 30 in this class right here. So let me click on this. Now, this line 30 right here is saying hash map that get checkbox. If I look at my file right here, checkbox, the issue with this is that this is an integer, and Java is having trouble casting this integer into a string. A simple way to solve this would be to simply add quotes around this integer to make it into a string. So I'm going to do this right now. Now we should be all set. Let me go ahead and rerun the test. Once again, our form is getting filled out, as you can see here. Let's click Submit, and the test completed successfully. We see test pass 1. That means that everything is working perfectly. We're able to read this YAML data and run our test with it. This works great when you have only one set of data to work with. But what happens when you have multiple tests and you want to work with different sets of data? Let's go back to the website for a second. This time I'm going to select tables. Here we have a couple of tables. One of them is this simple table right here. I want to write a test that is going to validate the items on this table. 
I want to make sure, for example, that oranges has the value of 399. We also want this test to be data driven by using YAML file. Let's go have a look at how to do that. So let me go ahead and add a second test over here. I've called this test verified table items. I also want to use a data provider for this test. In this case, I'll be using a data provider called data provider two. I haven't written that data provider yet, but we're going to do that next. Before showing how this test works, let me talk about how to store the YAML data for this test right here. Let's just say that we only want one YAML file to work with. We want to store all the data in one file. I went ahead and created another file over here. This one is called data2.yaml. Let me go ahead and open this up. And notice what I've done here. I went ahead and separated the test data. This is the data that we were using in test one, this one over here. And now we're adding another set of data. This is data2. This is the data that we want to use for the second test. Please pay attention to this indentation right here. Since YAML doesn't use any braces or commas, it looks at how you indent or space your code. In my case, I've said that all of this data belongs to this right here, data two. And I've said that all of this data right here belongs to data one. Let me go ahead and move this file over here. Now let's take care of writing this second data provider over here. In order to do that, we're going to go to the data util class. Then I'm going to copy this right here and create a new data provider. This one will be called two, data provider two. We're no longer going to be reading from this file, data1.yaml. We're going to be using data2.yaml. So I'm going to change this one to a two. The same thing goes for this one over here. So we're still calling this method right here, read YAML, and we're passing in the path for our YAML data. But now we also need to tell it which set of data we want. We want to be able to specify, is it data one, data two, data 10, data 20, whatever it is, we need to be able to specify that. So we're going to add a new parameter to this method right here. We're going to say string YAML object. This parameter called YAML object is going to refer to this object over here. This right here is an object. And objects contain key value pairs in them. So these are my key value pairs right here. Here we have another object with more key value pairs. So now notice that we have an error here. That's because we need to provide the parameter now. So for data provider one, I want to refer to data one right here. So let me copy this right here. And then I'm going to say space and then pass in that data that I want. The same thing goes for this one over here. But in this case, I want data two because this second data provider needs to return this second object over here. Now we need to be able to use this parameter right here. So let me scroll down over here. And this right here is where we do the data assignment right here. And what this is saying is that we want to store this map data into this array right here. But now this data no longer has a single object. Now it has multiple objects. And since we have multiple objects, we need to refer to the object that we want. So in this case, I'm going to say data dot get. And this needs an object key. Now this key is going to correspond to this object key right here. So here's an object key. Here's another object key. So I need to pass in the key for the object that I want. So I'm going to use this parameter right here. And that is how our data provider is going to be able to distinguish between the different sets of data. Let us go back to our test. So in this test, we're saying that we want to use data provider two. That's the one that we just created. Then we're using this hash map parameter right here to receive that data. This test will also go to the sandbox page and then select tables. Then we're going to store the price for each of the items into this string right here. So we're saying, get me the price for the oranges and put it in this price right here. Then we're doing an assertion to make sure that the price matches whatever's in this file right here. So that's why we're saying price is equal to hashmap.get oranges. When this executes right here, hashmap.get oranges is going to go this data provider to and retrieve the value for oranges, which in this case is going to be 399. And we're doing the same thing for the rest of the items. Let's go ahead and run the test to see what happens. We're navigating to the tables page and the test has completed successfully. I'm not going to rerun this first test again, but if I were to rerun it, it should still pass because we're referring to this data provider one and in that data provider one, we've said we want to retrieve data one. So it is going to retrieve this information in that case. Snake YAML is a very powerful library because not only can you read from a YAML file, but you can also write to a YAML file. Please let me know in the comments if you would like me to create a video on that. In this video, we focus on using YAML to make our test data driven. If you would like to do the same, but using JSON instead, 
please check out the video card on the screen to learn how to do that. Thanks so much for watching and making it to the end of the video. I'll see you in the next video.